Directly, that's T measured on the Kelvin scale. Remember that or you might fail. And the gas laws are good to know. You can use them everywhere you go. We're talking heavy duty chemistry. We're talking PV equals NRT. All right, folks, so we're going to learn a little bit about the gas laws today. We're going to see some pretty neat equipment. We're going to start out with Boyle's law right here, which was before the second law we're going to look at, Charles. Boyle was an Irish chemist 350 years ago. And this is a nice Boyle's law demonstrator. So I'm going to come around on the other side of the table, and I'm going to show you how to manipulate that. And we're going to take a look at how pressure and volume are inversely related. So here I have a syringe, and it's attached to this clear tubing to this pressure gauge. Now, notice it's in pounds per square inch. Some of you are saying, I don't use the English system. How could you use that and teach science? It's easy. This is the U.S., and we use that to measure tire pressure and all kinds of pressure here. So the kids ought to be familiar with PSI, pounds per square inch. If you want, you can have them do the conversion if that, if that excites you. So we're right here at about, look at that, about 14.7 pounds per square inch, just about standard atmospheric pressure. Now, this is a little freaky. This is 14.7 uh, pounds per square inch. So we're right about sea level on a good day. That's what standard pressure is. Here's our volume of gas, somewhere around 15 milliliters. And you can actually do data. You can use an overhead projector if you still have one, one of these devices. If you don't have an overhead projector, and you need to order one. Now, I know your schools may not do that, but you can call it a photon projecting device. That way, it's because it sounds high tech, they'll order you an overhead projector. Now, I've got right here this gas. I'm going to increase the pressure simply by pushing down on this. Look at that. The pressure's going up as the volume goes down. That's an inverse relationship. How cool is that? And you can actually take data and calculate the graph and you'll get a nice inverse relationship between pressure and volume. What happens if I increase the volume? Watch this, that is amazing. The pressure goes down. When I let it go back, about 14.7. That's Boyle's law in a nutshell. All right, the second one we're gonna take a look at is Charles' law. Charles was a French chemist. And we've got in this Dewar flask, this is a Dewar flask, and basically it's got a, two layers of glass that's insulated with a vacuum. A vacuum's nice because it doesn't allow the conduction and it doesn't allow convection of heat loss. But it is not silvered, so you can actually see the liquid nitrogen inside there. It looks just like water, except it's 196 degrees colder below zero. And I've put some, now you're going to say, I can't afford a doer like this because this is kind of expensive. When you get acid containers, they come in these nice styrofoam containers. They can also be used to hold liquid nitrogen for a fairly long time. A good portion of a day, it'll stay in there. If you want to keep it for a longer period of time, I'm afraid you're going to have to pop for something like these. These are expensive, but this will hold 10 liters of liquid nitrogen for well over 40, 50 days. Okay, it won't keep it. 10 liters in there, but it'll slowly evaporate out over a period of time. But these are very well insulated. So the thing I'm going to do is I've put some liquid nitrogen in there. Let me put a bit more inside the styrofoam container. And then I'm going to take this balloon and let me put a glove on, maybe even two. And I'm going to put the balloon inside the liquid nitrogen. And then from Charles' law, as the temperature goes down, the volume of the balloon goes down. Okay, the outside pressure is the room pressure, so that's a constant. So this is a nice example. I don't want to get my glove in there per se, so I'm going to put a second one in and a third one in. Notice these are nice red balloons, so you can see them out there in video land. And you don't want to go sticking your finger in there. It's like instant frostbite. But if that's the desired effect, be sure to do that. Now, whoa, Wilbur. I'm going to pull the balloons out, and we're going to see what happens as the temperature gets warmer. 
the temperature goes up, oh look, the balloons got cold, they've turned blue. Okay. So as the temperature goes up, the volume of the gas goes up. In this case, we've actually had a little bit of liquid nitrogen in the balloon because we liquefied some of it in this very cold temperature. That's pretty amazing. Now, some of you are saying, it's a scam. You're right, it is. I've got these other balloons here. Whoa, Wilbur, that one's blowing a gut. Sometimes these balloons get a little kinky, and there's very there's solid spots, so they pop. And there's all kinds. Oh, look at this one. That one looks amazing. Now, you've probably been to the circus, right? You ever wonder how they get all those clowns in a Volkswagen? It's liquid nitrogen. That's cool. All right, look at that. That was a little kinky, so it may pop. We don't know. But again, we're using Charles' law. Once you know it, kids, you could call it Chuck's. As the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. Now, I know what you're saying. That's got some math in it. My kids are nailed. Well, I'm going to show you a device that anybody can do. I'm going to ask this question of Bob. Bob, if you could come up here, and I'm going to ask you to read that. If you could just come right up here, because we're on the cutting edge. We, I have written this following device, uh, following piece of paper. I have written how to use this wonderful device right here. This is the PTV card. This is the card of last resort. Okay, Bob. PTV made simple. The PTV card can be used to show the relationships between pressure, temperature, and volume. By the way, this is alphabetical. That may be hard for some of your kids, but that's how to remember PTV, alphabetical. These variables are related by the ideal gas law, where N is the number of moles of gas, R is the gas constant that depends upon the units of the other variables. PV equals NRT. If your students have problems remembering it, you can have them pronounce it, pervnert. <laughs> okay. I suggest you use this card with your classes after you've made them think about what is going on through demonstrations, lab, and computer work. Exactly. This is the phenomenological approach. We have the phenomenon. We have the phenomenon. Now we're trying to get the science in. We're trying to get the theory in. Okay. You should cover the gas laws. Boyles, Boyles Charles, Charles, and gay lussex Okay. If you like unit analysis or ratio and proportion, use them first before you show this card to your classes. I would do that. This is the card of last resort. All right. This is the last thing you wanted. You wanted to try to understand the ratio and proportion or proportional reasoning. That's really important that they try to do that. Now, this is a method of last resort to help those who can't figure out what is happening. Exactly. So how do you use this marvelous item you have just purchased? This can be purchased. You know, you can't make this yourself. It's copyrighted. We'll come to your classroom just like Microsoft would. All right. First, take a cellulose encapsulated allotropic carbon trace display device, also known as a pencil, and insert it into one of the holes in the card. Push the pencil through the hole next to the symbol of the variable you wish to remain constant. Rotate the card on a pencil to show what happens as one variable stays constant and the other two change. Okay. So whose law is first there? Boyle's? Well, for example, if you put the pencil in the hole in the T, you can see the inverse relationship. That is Boyle's law. And as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down, T being constant. If you insert the pencil at P, you can see Charles' law. As T increases, so does V. And finally, insert the pencil at V to demonstrate Gay-Lussac's law. As temperature decreases, pressure decreases. And vice versa. And if they don't know it by now, they never will. Okay, I agree. Thank you, Bob. And thank you. Okay, we've just seen a very nice example of the gas laws, Charles' law, Boyle's law. We saw a way of uh, seeing how pressure, volume, and temperature are related. Now we're going to do this kind of quirky experiment with a duck. 
It's a nice solid duct, but there's some air inside. And I'm simply going to fill this with liquid nitrogen. And folks, this is a real lecture experiment because I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with a duct this size. Smaller ducts do something interesting. Large ducts, I'm not sure. So Bob is going to uh, put this on there. I'm going to start with some liquid nitrogen from the big door. And then I'm going to move my door to the ground away from there. And I'm going to put some more liquid nitrogen in so the duck can swim around in it. And at this point, I'm not exactly sure. Now we can have too much liquid nitrogen. And no offense, but I'm leaving because this could really quack me up. I don't even know what's going on with that duck. Maybe it's uh, had too much for lunch. I'm not sure. It's had a lot of quackers. It's had a lot of quackers. That's kind of interesting, right? I don't know what that noise is. Bob, would you go up and look? <laughs> what is that? It's laying an egg. I don't know. What did you say? That was foul? This is going to be quick. So it's going to be on the floor right down here. One, two, three. Whoa. I think the duck, I think the, the bottom, oh, it's too late, guys. The duck's already, it blew out its bottom. That's what happened. But I'm going to drop it anyway. Oh, that's the brakes. Some, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose.